Oh, dudes, ladies and gentlemen, it is, well, update time. There's quite a lot of updates, uh, including the entire BTS for me, as well as all the patches and everything else is coming out. There's quite a lot happening this month. It is, um, well, a madness. Well, starting off, you've got the RuneScape road trip. That's pretty much already started, let's be fair. I'll go into that in just a minute. But basically, there's quite a few shiny new rewards from it, including the private resource dungeon for players. So yeah, there is that. Explorer's Aura comes along with that. Complete with monsters to kill or generous resources, your choice of the two. Boosted XP, additionally a bank chest for fast, easy access. Plus you can get your reward lamps and your own special little pet thing named Fluffy. So yeah. It goes on. And on and on and on. It's the road trip thing, so there's loads of shit happening. I'll get into that. Either way, you've got the minigame spotlight system, so this is a new thing. We know it's been time, it's kind of difficult to get into the minigame kind of stuff, and they've added the grouping system and all the rest of it. We've decided to create a new way of playing and earning rewards by adding a universal minigame currency, which will be known as Thalers. Some of you may remember this from the RuneFest thing, and this was mentioned, making a universal currency for every single minigame. So, yeah, this is now a thing. You can earn it by playing any minigame. But every three days, one will be spotlighted. And you can earn five times as many failures as normal in the spotlighted minigame. On launch, Barbarian Assault will be the spotlighted game, with Conquest following soon after. You can spend failures on existing minigame rewards, Silverhawk boots and charges, or even Elite Clue Scrolls and Prismatic XP stars. Here we go. So, in a nutshell, I've no idea how much it's going to cost, because, well, it's a universal currency, and some minigames are, uh, well, let's be fair, giant pain in the ass. So, with that said, basically, in the grouping system, there'll likely be one of them that'll be highlighted, or spotlighted, as using their words, and basically you can earn five times more of the new universal currency doing those spotlight minigames than you would by just doing stuff. So, yeah. All in all, it seems pretty funky, especially the fact that you can get Silverhawk boots and whatever else from there, so, uh, yeah. Maybe we're worth having a gander, no? Moving on to the next one, they're improving the loot mechanics. So, they've been working on a new way to pick up loot, and it's been in beta for the past month. Thanks for the feedback so far, I've almost finished implementing it, and improved loot will be ready for launch later in the month, supposedly. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, it's an optional feature that allows you to pick up all your loot across a few game squares in two easy clicks. You can even customise it to only pick up certain types of loot, maybe you're only after herbs for example, or possibly items over a certain value. It's a small update that makes quite a chunky difference, and it's one of the favourite ones coming this month. So basically it's um, a pseudo auto loot, I guess you can think of it as. If you combine that with the... What the hell are they call the pet update that just came out? The special ones. The little bitches from Solomon Store. Those. You can tell them to go out and pick random shit up as well. So, yeah, mixing that with the um, pseudo water loot could be quite interesting, especially considering they just boosted those uh, legendary pet things as well. Hmm. Uh, moving on, you've got the beta. The beta service has been very useful in the past few months with the EOC mashup and the death rework and all the other stuff going along with it. Uh, any time you spare, basically they want people to jump in there to get some more feedback, in a nutshell, so just letting you know, bit is a thing. You can check out the death rebook there, so it may be worth having a little look before that does officially come out, so you kind of understand it a bit better. Either way, they're updating the D&D rewards. Oh yes. Uh, they find time to update these, finally. Some of the distractions and diversions, and a lot of these many people don't really do because, well, not particularly worth it. They've added a new title for D&D fans, reworked champion skull challenges to act as an optional repeatable event, fixed up the skeletal horror to offer elite clue scrolls, added a new phoenix familiar, made goblin flash mobs free to play, and the option to reset your fish flingers daily cap with tickets. They also created a teleport to Bork via the elite Varag armor. They've also improved the XP from the evil tree. Bunch of other things as well. This is on the front page. If you just look for the BTS, you can find it here, and then you can check out Mod P's dev blog for more info on it. Uh, in the miscellaneous news, Solomon's got some stuff. So you've got the Shadow Drake and stuff like that. They're in there now. And um, Block and Load is well, it was on Steam, and you could play it for free over the weekend. It's no longer a thing, so fuck that. 
Uh, finally, keep your eyes on the sky. Something's on the way, something's big, and soon all the Gilnor will have no choice but to notice. Look at the fella. Look at the shiny, shiny fella. Um, podcasts, they're a thing. And that's pretty much it for the BDS. That's what's coming out this month, so... Well, I guess. Basically, it's the improved loot mechanics, the mini-game spotlighting, and the universal currency, and then the massive road trip of craziness. So... Maybe we should have a gander at that, no? So, the community road trip and patch week. This is the update that came out earlier two days. So... RuneScape members. That's right, you people there. This uh, will offer a little bit of a reward for you, including your own personal resource dungeon for 30 days. If you haven't already, you can read the road trip news and get stuck in. It's pretty much there, it's pretty huge, and lots of good things happen. So, how to play, just be on at a certain time, no problem at all, whatever, skill in. <laughs> lots to do. So, throughout the month, in a, you're going to have dream mods wandering about, and they're going to be ta Kind of um, being open for four hours on the weekends, as well as all of the days between the 4th and 25th kind of deal. Uh, JMods will be available in person on every single weekday between the 4th and 25th, uh, between midday server time and 4pm server time. And there'll also be clones outside for hours and you can talk to them to get some more nonsense and blah 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 blah. So, skilling wise, complete your dungeon new floor of complexity 6, gather your dailies, blah blah blah, there's a massive list on you, you can check it all out yourself, basically you've got to do these kind of things for your main madness, and you get some rewards at the end of it, which is the explorer aura. Once per day for 30 days from when you first unlock it, this will grant you access to instant area where you can skill and kill to your heart's content, it's basically your own little dungeon, in a nutshell, is what this thing is and doing all of the categories up above uh, basically makes it last longer so you can play about in there for a bit longer it's only available for 30 days once you obtain the aura so yeah there we go you can also gain the hikers outfit from last year by cleaning the journal and completing all the categories if you haven't done it yet this will give you all of those additionally right the entire month is the bonus weekends and it's quite tasty so the first week has already gone so yeah sorry about that but this week coming up is double dungeon new tokens, including sinkholes, and 50% more base sinkholes XPs. This is this weekend. Very, very nice. Iron Men, as far as I know, are not affected by this. There we go. Time of proof. Iron Man accounts are not eligible for these bonuses. Unlucky fellas, we can't take part. But for everyone else, double dungeon new tokens, including your sinkhole stuff, that's happening this Saturday and Sunday. Well, 8th of May to 11th, so there we go. Uh, next week after that though is the Slayer and the Boss Weekend. You'll gain 50% more Slayer XP all those days. Additionally, double Slayer points and expanded drop tables for the Carfight King, Giant Mole and Barrows, including Rise of the Six. All charm drops offer an extra charm for you to top it off. And double amounts of all rare drops and the Ring of Wealth doubles with its effectiveness as well. So basically, stabbing shit in the face, not the weekend coming but the weekend after, will be a probably decent idea. I reckon you should probably get behind that. Extra charms. Lovely. And the week after that, on the 22nd to the 25th of May, is one more Castle Wars gold ticket per game. Double points from Seal and Creation, double points from Pest Control and Conquest, double zeal from Soul Wars, bosses killed in DT, counters two for the purpose of reward unlocks, double produce points from Livid Farm. So if you're after comp and you despise Livid Farm like any sane person really should do, happy days! And if you still don't have your superior void, why not get all the points for it now and start getting those on a go. And if you go over trim because you're a psychopath, you can get extra Castle Wars tickets. I don't know why you do steel ingration. You've got too much time on your hands. There is soul walls. Um, and then the special one. The very, very special one is the special port bonus, which will only be applicable if you actually have access to player own ports, but never mind. Uh, between the 15th of May and the 1st of June, ports will offer you 25 voyages a day instead of 15. This will be wonderful news, except for once you get further into pop, one voyage takes 12 hours. So, there we go. Those are kind of the crazy things that are happening throughout the entirety of May. There's a lot of it. Hmm, not bad at all. Either way, there's another little competition going on while we're at it, because May's pretty mental. But the entire 
length of this. Uh, there's some prizes on go from Jagex themselves. Well, I say Jagex, a cooler master than Jagex. So, throughout the entire month, there'll be posts in the forums and Facebook and Twitter and some other random things that Jagex are using. And basically, the idea is you've got to go around and pick up the codes that are on those places. So, they'll be giving you clues in the forums and whatnot. You go around trying to hunt them down. The more codes you have, the more likely you are to win a prize. Top prize is a Cooler Master headset, mouse and keyboard, happy days, plus 5 RS bonds and a choice of your own item in the merchant store. Second prize is just the Cooler Master headset, 2 RS bonds and a choice of t-shirt from the store. Full details of how to enter can be found here, you can just go to the front page of RuneScape check that shit out yourself. Uh, moving on, this week's tasks are all about the forum red and tumbler. Mods Balance and Kalia have some tasks for you for the Road Trip Forums. Bro. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough. Look out for the RS subreddits, team of mods. They have style, flair, and the key to one of this week's codes. So if you're interested in this, all this information is on you. Check back every week in May to find out more information and hunt in all the codes. And then at the end of the month, you'll be asked to email all those codes to them so you can spam them. And maybe if you're lucky, you'll win some free stuff. Good times. We have the patch notes, that's a thing too. It's quite a large chunk of patch notes and I do have them up here which we'll get to in just a moment. The next thing is Solomon's store and as you can see right there, extra action bars are now going to be sold. There are five available for you to purchase and each ups your total number of currently available action bars. Right now it's five, but you can have up to ten. It'll only cost you nine ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine. I actually don't know how much it costs because I haven't checked. But it's a thing. So you can always check out Solomon's store and you can find out how much those bad boys are. So if you really, really want action bars, you can go ahead and get them. And if you really, really want them but are too lazy to buy them, you can always just get bonds in game and then get it that way. Job done. And last but not least is streaming throughout this week. Uh, 4 p.m. in game time is the developer Q&A, which is pretty much today and you've already missed it. huh? You can go check it out on the Twitch channel if you want. Either way, jobs are good. Un. And pretty much right now, this second, well, at the time of recording this, uh, they're opening up 10k medium scrolls on Twitch, so that'll be quite interesting. Also, was it last week? It might have been last week, but they opened up 10k easy clues as well. You can have a little gander at that if you're interested in the clue scrolly goodness. And now we move on to the final thing of today. This is the patch notes. Look at them beautiful letters. Fuck, it's gonna take a while. Right, graphical wise. Tweak the colour of the white claw and the offhand white claw to better match white armour. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Sloan now wears the correct skill cape during the Wild Gothic Sleeps quest. It is no longer possible to cosmetically override the falcon given by Matthias. Fix the colour of the huge dungeon viewing Fallen Stars. Updated the quest targets for both Demon Slayer and Dimension of Disaster Demon Slayer. A minor stretching issue on Virok's helm has been fixed. Right, graphics done. Happy days. Moving on to the skills and some mini games. Uh, fletching arrow shafts from Mabel Logs now state the correct level needed. Players can now fill empty plant pots with soil at the Privthinus Crystal Tree Patch. Aquarium perks will now work correctly with fishing gores and scrimshaws. The featherless fishing perk now works in Dungeoneering. Players can now use raw great white sharks on the tackle box from fish flingers. Players can no longer fletch while balancing on the Serenity Post. Fixed a typo in the Captain Kane's tutorial chat. Thok will now show the correct life points during Fremic Sagas. The previously selected crew member will now be unselected when re-rolling crew for hire in playroom ports. Moving on to the quests and the achievements. Characters involved in the Curse of Zara's mini quest and will now only appear in the correct location for the player's randomised path, rather than appearing in every single possible location available and speaking some gibberish. Uh, corrected the remainder message when being caught by a poison tripwire throughout the Tyran and Quiver equipped. A. Corrected the reminder message that being caught by a poison tripwire without the Tyran and Quiver equipped. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, corrected erroneous references to Elvag being male in the player's song about her during chat. Uh, without the long haul bouncer during the Fremi Trials. 
The Prevenous Achievement Sharks are good for the Elf, now complete when using the Deposit Inventory button on the Bank Deposit Box interface. Lovely. And now we move on to the miscellaneous other stuff. Uh, the Aegis Aura has had its damage absorption increased to 80k. The Ancestor Spirit Aura has had its activation chance and damage increased. The Berserk Aura now lasts for an increased amount of time with a lower defense reduction. Players can now use the WASD keys to move the camera in various legs. I don't know why I'm speaking like this, oh my god. Uh, custom keybinds will no longer trigger incorrectly when typing in chat in legacy mode interface. The volume of the music has been increased slightly and a few additional player suggested adjustments have been made. Hmm. Improved the way clan members can claim bonus XP for capping in their citadels. It is now possible to use alchemy spells inside various instance areas. Fixed the issue which occasionally caused followers to despawn before they are meant to. Chompy birds no longer appear to have one life point when they are defeated. Hard mode commander Ziliana can no longer be killed from the blood necklace effect. Springs can now be purchased in batches of 1000 every 4 hours. The Make X interface will now account for items players have in the legendary Bet Beast of Burden. Uh, added a warning message when trying to extend the legendary Pet Beast of Burden ability regarding the 2 hour cap and stop players using up pouches when their timer has increased no further. The legendary pet forage ability no longer states that it is a passive ability, as it is an activated ability. Improve the legendary pet diet, consequently the legendary pet fertilizer ability will now trigger less often. Right click options on pets are now more consistently disabled when leaving instances, cutscenes and logging in. Uh, legendary pets will no longer get stuck when trying to pick up a drop. Fix the typo with the legendary pet repair ability, and add a mouse over effect to the clickable loot the clickable link in the Solomon's in-game purchase interface. Keybinds will no longer be locked after exiting treasure hunt item management interface. Uh, improve the directions about how to use the quest journal in the tutorial path system. The chat when ordering split back ones has been altered to not mention purchasing armor. Players will no longer start gutting leaving fish when using drag and drop from the imagery or bank. Circus will no longer use melee attacks from a distance. Corrected the spelling error with the Marok Strange rock list. Fixed some typos in the Seren Memories, Devotion and Longevity. Fixed a typo with the Clan Citadel Headguard dialogue. Garlic's Crush option is now a members only feature, as it creates a members object. The Fang of Mohogan will now correctly appear with the Ango when trying to retrieve it. Never heard of it. Smoke Tendrils will now no longer display when the ability's filter is toggled if the ability is not unlocked. Stop Tyndall Mar Stopped Tyndall Marchant? Marchant? From taking several swords at once and only returning one. Uh, prevented all the pets from entering the Lumbridge Crater. Fuck off pets. And last but not least we've got the Ninja Fixers. Graphically updated the interfaces used in the player owned house custom room. Or costume room should say. Well then, let me read. Added the Ghost Hunter armor set to the armor case in the player owned house costume room. The QBD, or the cupboard, activating artifact and the Dragonfire Shield Sogan animations will no longer momentarily stop players from moving. Local chat filters now also filter the chat that appears above players' heads. Lost token drops now display a loot beam. Players will no longer receive a warning when teleporting to the God Wars dungeon while wielding next armor or a shard of the cock. Eh? Players will no longer receive a warning when teleporting to the God Wars dungeon whilst they are wearing next armor or the shard of Zaros. Guess that makes sense. Uh, the Chaos Elemental now respawns quicker. Uh, PG. Uh, the Prisoner's Bonfires will now grant the Soul Reaper bonus duration for the increased maximum health boost, and the skilling of PVM portals in the Prisoner's Max Guild are now easier to navigate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it. So that is a bollock ton of stuff, all for me. So the patch notes is pretty huge. This is patch week after all. Uh, the behind the scenes, well, eh, not really a huge amount. Coming this month, you got like the minigame spotlight, which honestly is a fairly large update, but content wise, not massive. Same with the auto loot or the pseudo auto loot that's coming out of beta, jobs are good. Um, fixing up the D&D rewards and then a massive road trip, plus the um, huge amount of bonus stuff happening on every weekend. Can't complain, really. Me is wonderful. Unless you're an Iron Man, in which case you can't take part in any of this bonus weekend. Unlucky son, fuck it off. Yo. That is pretty much it, peoples. There, you know all been informed. So, until next time, 
I'll catch you all later. Have a good one.